5.31 PI, Pacific Mornings with Aggie. Uh, Nisa, I believe you're not going to welcome back to Pacific Mornings with Aggie here on 5.31 PI. We're sitting at 27 minutes away from 8 o'clock. Uh, as we probably all know, it was a very much historic Rugby World Cup final uh, over the weekend where the Black Ferns edged their way to victory over England in a final that really had the world cheering for New Zealand. Uh, so joining us live this morning to speak on this historic win uh, is a former Black Ferns captain and multiple World Cup winner, Fia Ofa Mausili, uh, who is actually also fresh from her induction into the Rugby Hall of Fame. With that, I say Malole Sufu and welcome to the show this morning. Yeah, it's all for love, everyone. Mm. Uh, Fio, oh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, yes, there was a massive win that had just happened from our beautiful Black Ferns. You really must have been, I suppose, satisfied after this successful Rugby World Cup campaign for the Black Ferns, yes? Oh, absolutely. Um, as you can tell by my voice, uh, it was a big weekend. <laughs> yeah. A big weekend of celebrations, a lot of highs. Um, a really successful World Cup, so... Big, big ups to everyone that um that got involved, but I think the the winner of it all was the crowd that um the girls pulled in, and yeah. the sh and how they showcase um uh, rugby. It was it was so awesome, and um these memories will stay with with these girls forever. But it's the um relationships or or the um the young girls coming forward wanting to be a a, a class rugby player is mm. is is what they've um, really achieved. I mean, yes, like you said, they pulled in fantastic numbers uh, for the crowds. What else sort of stood out for you the most? I think rugby, how they showcased rugby, like, wasn't, and it was all different throughout, like, different countries bringing in different um, phase plays. Um, you see some of the plays that you, you saw back in the last World Cups, mm. um, and you, you see that with countries bringing that in, um, just how well the countries got along together. Um, it was good that they all stayed in, in one big hotel. I think it was the Ridges Hotel. Mm -hmm. But um, they got to go around together and um, and see a bit of our, our country that, 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 you know, we've been in a pandemic for the last few years. And so to have everyone come over and, and see our beautiful country was, it was you know, was, was priceless and surreal. Mm. Um, for all, of course, you know, I know there was a bit of a, a welcome. There were some fans, of course, that did sort of get to greet uh, the girls. Mm. But um, how have the girls been, though, since the wind? And should we actually maybe have a proper parade for them? Oh, we, sh we definitely should have a proper parade. Yeah. And I we should, at a start of a World Cup, we need a, a, a you know, a flag bearing, you know, with the yeah. country walking in. So that would have, that needs to be done as well and acknowledged. Um but they they they're pretty they're pretty much on a high still like I know, I know that and it's going to be a week of celebrations and they're going to just want to be with their families and um celebrate their way um their family family way mm. but I think we we need to send send this World Cup off with, with a big a parade. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are all down for that. Uh, for you, oh, of course, you know we know and we understand you have probably laid a lot of groundwork four women uh, who were able to play out there on the weekend. Was it actually sort of, I don't know, for yourself um, hard to maybe watch and not play? I mean, has there ever been a time where you feel, maybe I could give this one more go? <laughs> like, it, it, was, it was pretty funny because I, I got asked that question when on the first um, uh, first day opening. And I was like, no, I'm pretty content not playing. But when I saw everything, I was like, man, I want to get on the field. But um, no, the, the, I'm definitely not going to get back on the field. Um, this body has had its um, years of playing, so mm -hmm. just just standing back and watching it, I was so proud. Yeah. Um, you know, the, well, this is a we've dreamt of a full pack stadium, um, and you know these girls get to to experience that, and it's something that we've always dreamt of. And I wish it happened a whole lot earlier, you know, for the for the, for the older girls to experience as well. Yeah. But um, now it's here. I just I just wish that. I mean, I just hope that it keeps. The momentum keeps going, and that we um, sell out more more stadiums, not just in New Zealand but around the world. Oh, I'm pretty sure that is something that is going to happen. Uh, if you're, now, and, and again, you've participated probably in five World Cups for New Zealand. What mm -hmm. though was just really different about this year's tournament at home here in Aotearoa? Oh, the people. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely, you know, we see it with our, our, our you know, 
our tongans and our salmons that support our um are so passionate you know of their flags and everything on the cars and, <laughs> and we got to see that for our woman mm. um like men coming out and brides um made outfits to say that they're supporting women you know that they're the bridesmaids uh, they're no longer bridesmaids they're the brides of rugby so that mm. was fantastic wow. so yeah i mean it's definitely definitely been an, an amazing World Cup. I mean, from your perspective, of course, as a woman, do you then feel it is time for women uh, in sports to be paid probably a little bit more? I mean, can women in rugby live off the money that they're actually sort of earning now as they represent New Zealand? Um, what well, they are professional um, paid yeah. after at the moment. Um, yes, they um they can live off uh, the money they're getting, but what I like to see is um more contract more contracts being opened up. You know, it's, you know, we need more in different levels as well. You've got the super rugby that's happening. Um, even within the um, Farah Palmer Cup, you know, some contracts should be uh, available to those young girls as well because they need to know and how to experience it from a young age. But so many girls are wanting to play rugby, so we need more contracts at different levels. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel, I mean, of course, the development and the progress that the women have made thus far here in Aotearoa. What, mm -hmm. is your what has your connections been like with players from overseas? Meaning with... Um, uh, with just basically having to want to jump on and, you know, seeing the progression that we've gotten so mm -hmm. far. Have you guys had a bit of a connection with players from overseas? Oh, yes, there, there has been some summits that they've had here and there's been players. A lot of females are getting into the coach coaching roles too. And I'm like, man, you know, we've had a lot of interest in girls wanting to coach, but they're actually really awesome coaches. You know, they, they're the sponges. They want to soak everything and they want to make sure that they're out there delivering it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's been a lot of different summits that they've had with, with countries. We had Oceana come over as well. Um, but, yeah, so I'm, I'm not on that coaching side of things for the development side of things, but I can see that the progression that countries are coming together to um, share knowledge and it's mm. all about the growth in the game. Beautiful and it is again you've been part of that growth because you obviously were recently inducted into the Rugby Hall of Fame uh, mm. for of course your years of blood sweat and tears to see to seeing what it is right now. I mean what was it like though when you of course accepted that honour? Yeah um, <laughs> it, it, was, it was really weird at first because I didn't really um, it was a weird feeling because you play rugby, I always say, because you play rugby because you love it. Um, mm -hmm. This was never on a tick list to, sure. to, to get, so you, it was, I never th thought that, you know, I'll reach that, but um, to be acknowledged, I, I was really proud. Mm. And it's, I guess it's because it's, it's the work that your family have done. Yeah. Um, it's my family name that, that's out there and it's the, their support. Um, I've, I've got three brothers and coming through um, rugby you hear the, the the chat you know from other men saying oh girls shouldn't play rugby or rugby is not made for women but when you don't hear your own brothers say that that's the or your father that's the the driving force that that makes you want to play because it's only their voices that count it's it's your own village and so that kept me going and that um yeah their presence and their um their vibe and, their, and, their, and the way that they live their life, that's what kept me going. I love that. I love hearing mm. that. I suppose that's really what comes to my next question. How much really has your uh, Samoan culture sort of played in your upbringing as a rugby player? Oh, my Samoan, that, that's kept me grounded. Mm. Um, the, everything, because I was, I was born in Samoa and then moved over to New Zealand, but all the morals and all the standards that I was taught when I was young, that stays with you. And that those morals build culture that mo those morals build ainga mm. and so when you go into a team um team environment you take those standards those morals in with you mm. so um i'm yeah I, you I of, love my culture. Yeah. Oh no, and I know, I know you do. Yeah. Uh, are you of the thought? Because we you know we were talking to Jerry Seal uh, Seal just before in regards to you know have, seeing our Kiwi players of, of of a Pacific heritage wanting to then now go and play for their own homeland. Is that something that you would even encourage? So as the women in in this rugby field, yeah, 
I mean, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like when I was playing um, Black Friends, I wasn't able to, you know, to represent mm-hmm. someone because I've already chosen Black Friends, but I would still represent someone in Auckland, Marist, or Auckland, Samoa. Mm-hmm. Um, we went away to Samoa for Sevens tournament that they had there at the Marist Club. Oh, any opportunity that I did have um, to represent my country, I did. Yeah. And, and even that's even though if that's within within New Zealand as at a club level, you know, in some comps that we did, you know, I still represent some more. So I mm. say it's important for girls in the national in the national level to go back and yeah. play um in these tournaments because those young girls or those girls will never experience playing with mm. a national player. So that's a story that they can tell their kids is that look, I got to tackle this national player or I got to learn off this, this national player so um that's that's something that you know i encourage all girls to do and all ladies doesn't matter if you're a, a national player you should be out there still playing with, alongside these these girls um in club level or or regional i love that i uh, feel as we sort of wrap up look because i want you to rest your voice on it again. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> no no it's okay I just want to sort of ask then you and you have alluded it to there already in your last mm-hmm. answer what would be your final message you know to all the up-and-coming young Pacific women Maori uh, whatever heritage that they come from to really be able to come into that space and see what the possibility is of women doing great in uh, rugby it's just all you like always taking those opportunities when it when it comes um you know if you're a young girl wanting to become uh an international or national player you know you've got to have that fighting drive or you've got to be present you've got to actually turn up and it starts from your own individual trainings then you go to your team trainings and your national girls are there and it's about learning off them taking in everything um never Never that being that person that um, thinks you know it all, because you can always learn. You got to keep learning. Um, so don't always be that that tough person thinks that you know it all because you don't. <laughs> and, it's, it's, and so and also as a national athlete, making sure that you're giving back um, and teaching what you learn in the national area to to your club or to your regional teams. It's all, it's all about sharing. We all grow together. Mm, I love that. Uh, look, Fia, thank you so much for your time this morning. We do want to let you rest. And just, of course, after this big, big win uh, from the Black Ferns, uh, go and enjoy uh, time with your family and friends. It's just exciting to know that you've been part of that campaign. Uh, but we just really appreciate your insight this morning. So, Fafitai today, lover. Yeah, Fafitai for you. No worries. That, of course, former Black Ferns uh, captain and multiple World Cup winner. It is Fiao Ofa Mo.